Hey everyone, so in this video, I'm gonna show some fun ways you can play maths with your DFAM. I've got my DFAM back in my Eurorack case and I put maths right next to it so I can patch it. I'm gonna show everything through the Mordax data so you can see what's going on. This is how I have things set up right now. It's a pretty straightforward sound. Just some, some kicks on the one and the five, and then I have the pitch turned up on the two and the seven. If you've watched any of my DFAM videos before, you know that pitch to noise level is one of my favorite patches. Because it adds that little bit of a, like a hi-hat noise. This first thing that we're gonna do with maths is kind of playing on that and taking it to the next level where you can get some real dynamic hi-hats. And, and I'm just gonna show you how you can play around with that. So we're gonna make a couple of patches. The first thing you could do is go from pitch into trigger. And then just so you can see what's going on, I'm gonna go down from the sum into the Mordax data. It's off the screen, but the green wires I'm gonna use are always going to the Mordax data and then coming out of it. And we'll go into noise level. Since we're going into sum, I'm gonna make sure to have everything set to zero, including channel four, which is what we're going through, so we can turn it up and see how things go. All right, so let's hit run stop. And so right now, nothing's going through because this attenuator is set to zero. So right there, I mean, that sounds almost exactly like what was happening without it being patched, except for you have a tremendous amount of control right now as to what those things sound like. So number one, you can lower and raise the volume very easily, whereas when it was pitched to noise level, you were kind of stuck. And go all the way up, or just maybe have a little subtle effect. I mean, even just having the ability to attenuate that is awesome. But let's play around with the attack and decay and see what we can come up with. Pretty cool. And this is one of those other things too that as you're playing, you could mess around with that decay time just to make things interesting in as you're performing. or you could use an external modulation source to modulate it. So let's go, I think you can see it on the screen from right below, I have a quad LFO, and I mean, you could use anything. We could even use the other side of maths to modulate it, but we're gonna use that in a second. Just kind of add some nice rhythm and texture to it. Let's also play around with the different slopes. Pretty cool stuff. Let me set it back to something moderate. So as I said, we're gonna use the other side of maths too. So one thing that I like to do is use both, and this one will be hitting those off beats, but you can also pull the trigger out and set it. use the other one as well. And so what that's gonna do is create 
basically playing hi-hats on the 16th notes with accents now on the two and the seven. So what I did there too is I was noticing on the Mordax data that we were kind of maxing out. So I lowered the overall voltage by using the attenuator on two. And since we're coming out of the sum, we can do that. And it lowers the entire voltage down. As it gets down into the negative range, I think that because we're going into noise level, it's not going to have any effect. It's just going to sort of cut out. It would be like lowering the noise level to zero once it gets past neutral. So, so that creates some space too. That's what it sounds like is happening to me. See, and if you wanted to take the accents out, you could turn the attenuator on. If you wanted to take the accents out, you can take it, turn down the attenuator on four. If you want to take the 16th notes out, you turn down the attenuator on one. So it's just a great way to play with hi-hat sounds and to have so much more control over your rhythm. So let's check out something else. So in this next patch, we're going to get a little crazy. We're going to make math self-oscillate and plug that into the DFAM and get a little funky. So here's how I have the DFAM set up. It's pretty much using the same patch that I was at the start of the last one going from pitch to noise level. So the first thing we're gonna do, make math self oscillate, and we're gonna put it into the external audio. So I'm gonna come out of sum. Actually, let's go through the Mordax so you can see what's happening. Since we're coming out of sum, I'm gonna set these back to zero, and I'm gonna turn the cycle on. So now watch what happens when I turn up channel four. Now it's self oscillating. And since we're plugging into the external audio, as you see here, it says noise slash external level. So this is controlling the external level. But what's going to happen is since all the pitch, since the pitch is turned down on all steps but two and seven, that's going to be the only time it rings out. Let's hear it. So it's already got kind of like something that could be in like a techno patch or something, but you can change the pitch by adjusting the decay value. You can get to a point where it's not self oscillating anymore and you only hear like kind of crackles or even nothing. This can also be modulated by an external LFO. And actually we could even use maths to modulate it by using channel one as the LFO. So let's try that. Here, I'm gonna come out of channel four four and we'll plug channel one into modulation actually you know what we can come out of some still 
we can come out of sum because when we plug into channel one, that eliminates it from sum. So we can still use these to control it and it won't affect things. So let's here, let's set it to something fast. So you, this indicates how the LFO is moving. Since we have an attenuator too, you can control how much it's changing the pitch. From a little to a lot. Let's add in some more tones. The attenuator on channel four adjusts the volume level and the attenuator on number one will adjust how much that frequency is shifted. Right now both oscillate, both channels are self oscillating. So there's a lot of fun to be had with this patch. All right, let's check out one more. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to duck the bass. So if you don't know what ducking the bass is, it's a studio trick usually done with side chaining compression where you send the signal from something like a kick into a compressor on a bass line or a pad or something else. So that way it lowers in volume right as the kick is hitting. And it creates this pulsating sound and it can turn an otherwise boring pad or bass into something really exciting. So let me play the sounds that I have set up right now. This is just gonna be the simplest DFAM patch ever. This is what the DFAM is gonna sound like. What I have here is mutable instruments braids in the CS80 saw going through an ADSR, a sem, the Dofer SEM filter into this quad VCA mixer. So this is what the bass sounds like. It's kind of boring. It's pretty, pretty simple. This is what they sound like together. So what I want to do here is we're going to take the envelope of the VCA and we're going to flip it on its head. I'm going to take the envelope out and put it into the input of channel one. And we're going to plug in the Mordax so you can see what's going on. And actually, let me just play it without the bass. So as you can see, nothing in the Mordax is happening, but as I turn this up, we start to see the envelope, that's the, that's the VCA envelope, being modified also by these. That's a good place to start. But one thing that's awesome about maths is these are attenuverters. So although you can attenuate it, this is zero. And if we go in the negative direction, you can see how the signal flips over. And that's what we're going to use to duck our bass. And we're going to do this in a couple of different ways. One way is we could use the filter and have the filter be modulated to leave it open and then shut whenever the bass is playing. Or we could do something that I think sounds a little bit better and is probably closer to the idea of compression and just lower the volume by plugging this into the CV here. Why don't we start with that? So I'm going to go ahead and put it back at zero. So nothing's going to happen at first and then we'll dial it in. So let's make this bounce a little bit more. And we're 
we're ducking the bass. You can play with the contours too. So, I mean, that just adds so much bounce. Let's do it again, but this time we're going to use the filter. So, I'm going to plug this into the CV in of the frequency of the filter. I mean, that sounds pretty cool, too. That's just another way you can incorporate maths into your setup with the DFAM. Thanks for watching this. I hope you find some of these tips helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments section. If you have a way that you like to patch maths with the DFAM, I'd love to hear about it. Always looking for new ideas, and I know that other people read the comments too, so keep them coming. I write out all these patches, and I put them on PDFs that I put up on my Patreon page. This one is included in my DFAM patch book, which has over 20 DFAM patches. And now I'm starting to incorporate more Eurorack modules. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, check out the link below. It's a great way to support my channel. I truly appreciate it. If you do feel like supporting the channel and you don't want to sign up to Patreon, you could just visit one of the affiliate links that I have in the description. It's a great way to like throw me a tip or something without any cost to you at all. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.